you're watching this video, it's safe to assume that you're someone who enjoys anime and manga. The stories we become enveloped in, the characters we get to watch grow, and the lessons that we learn and carry with us all make for an immersive escape from the pressures of day-to-day -day life. For how much love and compassion you could feel for a series, it can be hard to believe that the creator behind it may not be the person you thought they were. But how can someone who created something that I enjoy so much do something like that? is likely a question plaguing many fans. As unfortunate as it is, this is the reality, and it's important to observe past instances of misconduct in the manga industry, seeing how both the community and the industry itself responded, and discussing what would be the best course of action for readers. Quick PSA, this video discusses instances of assault against minors. If this may be a sensitive topic for you, it may be best to avoid watching this video. Now, where do we even begin? Chronological order probably makes the most sense, which means we'll be starting with Mitsutoshi Shimabukuro. Shimabukuro is known for creating the manga series Toriko, which ran in Weekly Shonen Jump from 2008 to 2016. In August of 2002, Shimabukuro, who was 27 at the time, was arrested and convicted of paying a minor for sex. I can confirm one instance of this behavior with the source detailing upwards of five alleged instances. As a result, his current manga that had been running since 1997, Sekimatsu leader Den Takeshi, also serialized in Jump, was canceled. Surprisingly, there is very little cut and dry information regarding this incident, with some of the original Japanese and English sources no longer being available online. But from what I was able to gather, he was sentenced to two years in prison, but seemingly only spent four months behind bars before being granted four years probation. In the R Toriko subreddit, you can find information provided from a user who we will refer to as K, who highlights that Shimabukuro has not only publicly apologized multiple times, which I don't doubt, but no sources were provided, but also allegedly went on record stating that he was not aware of the girl's age. Also no source. Now, you might be wondering, why you would even think about considering anything some random redditor has to say, especially with no sources and within the subreddit of said series nonetheless, kind of asking for a biased defense. Well, it's worth noting that K played a huge role in the fan translation or scanlation of Toriko for the entirety of its run. He's very knowledgeable in all things Toriko and Shimabukuro, and despite sharing no sources, its words can at least be taken with a grain of salt. But it should not be controversial to believe that a 27-year-old should have the ability to not put themselves in this kind of situation in the first place. Shimabukuro returned to the manga industry in 2004 with the new series titled Ring, being serialized in Super Jump magazine under the umbrella of Shueisha, the parent company of Weekly Shonen Jump. In the same magazine, he was later able to revive Sekimatsu Leader the following year in 2005. Two one-shots, and three years later, Shimabukuro effectively returned to Shonen Jump in 2008, starting his most well-known series, Torigo. It ran for 8 years and sold around 25 million copies, spawning an anime adaptation, two movies, and crossovers and cosigns with other popular manga, to the point that it was clear that Torigo was being marketed as the series that would turn the big three into the big four, alongside One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach. Even after Toriko ended in 2016, Jump has hosted multiple new one-shots with Shimabukuro, as well as serializing him again with a new series in 2020, Build King, that ran for 25 chapters before being cancelled. So my question is, where was the punishment? A few months behind bars? A few years of probation? You can barely argue his reputation was hurt, as he's one of the most successful mangaka of all time. I'd like to say that it's shocking to learn there was a lack of justice served for the involved victim and or victims, and the fact that he continued to receive massive support from the manga industry time and time again, but unfortunately this is something that occurs in every other medium of entertainment as well. People protect and defend those within their circles, essentially allowing this type of behavior to continue without consequence. A user in the R manga subreddit, who we refer to as R, provided some insight to how Japan and his laws treated crimes like Shimabukuro's during this time period, stating that policing in the area of paid sexual favors was very lax, 
as it was often conducted via organized crime, which caused law enforcement to steer clear of the situation. R goes on to say that the government mainly wanted to make an example out of Shimabukuro to prove to the press that they actually cared about the issue, as opposed to what was in the best interest of the victims. After doing some research, this definitely does seem to be the case, with criminals often finding legal loopholes for services known as injo kosai or compensated dating, meaning they're labeling it as a service of intimate dating or cuddling while keeping quiet about what's really going on. And please, if you have any research pertaining to anything in this video, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. With Shima Bukuro's case being explored, we move on to examine another instance of misconduct in the manga industry. Probably the incident most recognizable to manga readers is that of Roni Kenshin creator Nobuhiro Watsuki. Kenshin, also serialized in Jump, ran from 1994 to 1999. In November of 2017, it was reported to the public that Watsuki had been arrested on child pornography charges, possessing numerous DVDs that he obtained in July of 2015. But funnily enough, similarly to Shimabukuro's case, a lot of the original sources are strangely wiped from the internet. During his deposition, Watsuki allegedly admitted that he liked girls in late elementary school to around the second year of middle school. The ongoing Kenshin continuation, the Akaido arc, was suspended for one year and Watsuki pled guilty to his charges, ultimately paying a fine of 200,000 yen, which is only equivalent to around 1400 US dollars. So that's it guys, video's over. As long as you can afford an entry level gaming rig, you can kind of just do whatever you want, man. They don't really care for it. But on a more serious note, the Akaido arc was rescinded from Shonen Jump, now appearing in monthly magazine Jump SQ and resumed serialization after about a year. They even had an unofficial press run for him down the line, doing interviews with other popular mangaka that he had relationships with in hopes to mend his image. Coupled with the recent success of the Hokkaido arc, the original manga has spawned its own anime, animated in live action films, and even video games. We're talking 72 million copies sold here, guys. He's simply making corporate executives too much money for them to take any action. That, and the fact that within Japanese culture, there's a massive societal expectation to have great respect for their elders and for seniority. So being that he's such a veteran in the industry, it would be socially frowned upon for many under him to speak out on the issue. I think we can clearly start to see some patterns being formed here. After examining Watsuki's case, we can now take a look at the last incident of mangaka misconduct we'll be discussing here, which is that of Tatsuya Matsuki, the author and co-creator of Act Age. Just as the rest of the series mentioned, Act Age was serialized in Jump and ran from 2018 to 2020. In August of 2020, it was reported that Matsuki was arrested for assaulting two middle school girls in public before fleeing away on his bike. The incident actually took place a few months prior back in June and was caught on film. Now with the incident being caught on camera, this makes for much more daring evidence against Matsuki, thus resulting in harsher punishments when compared to other examples in the video. Matsuki was found guilty of his charges in December of 2020, being sentenced to 18 months in prison but would only serve his sentence if he broke good behavior over the course of the next three years. So yet again, no actual prison time served. Act Age's serialization and jump was also cancelled only a few days after the news came out, with full support from the manga's co-creator and illustrator, Shiro Usazaki. And there surprisingly isn't too much left to say on the matter. Not because corporate execs are backtracking, scrubbing all reputation damaging sources from the internet, but because of how quickly action was taken. Aside from the way the law handled it, this is probably the best example of how Jump should deal with a situation like this. They canceled the series immediately, and while it's true that they took the same route with Shimabukuro initially, he was welcomed back less than two years later, as Matsuki would likely never tump Jump's pages again for the foreseeable future. Wow, if only it was that simple. I guess, go and support any current and future works from Usazaki. She's truly an insanely talented artist. So, if you want to, you could say that the manga industry is at least improving in the way they handle these types of situations. But fan responses differ from series to series. Shimabukuro's incident occurred a few years before Toriko was serialized, with many fans not becoming aware of the incident until after they finished the series, if at all. 
Present day, it's common to hear people voice their opinions against Shimabukuro returning to Jump, with many having chosen to boycott Build King back when it was serialized. With Kenshin, the series was already over 20 years old by the time the incident occurred. The core fan base had already lived with the series for so long, so the incident at most would deter new readers. Online, I've seen about a 50-50 split on if readers plan to keep up with the Hokkaido arc, especially with the current Roroni Kenshin anime currently airing. And lastly, Act Age readers didn't really have much of a choice in the matter, as the series was quickly cancelled, but many readers stood by Jump's decision. After examining what exactly happened in these incidents, it's time we beg the question, how should fans handle a situation like this? Let's say that the creator of the series that you considered to be the greatest thing you ever experienced was revealed to have committed a past crime similar to the ones mentioned in this video, and you no longer want to support them, what options do you have? Well, the most effective and most ethical stance you could take on a situation like this is a full-on boycott. No buying any more volumes, no reading any more chapters, no longer promoting the series, just a full excommunication out of your life. Now, I'm fully aware that to expect someone who's been reading a series for sometimes hundreds of chapters to completely drop it at a moment's notice is unrealistic. So then we bring up the argument of separating the art from the artist, or in this case, the manga from the mangaka. This is a conversation that I usually hear being brought up in the music industry regarding artists such as Michael Jackson, R. Kelly, and recently Kanye West, unfortunately. And while I can understand both sides of the argument, many believe that the way separating the art from the artist is best carried out brings up another issue of ethics, piracy. In many cases, piracy is wrong, but would it really be wrong to pirate the work of a criminal? Especially given how hard the anime and manga industry is already plagued with piracy, this wouldn't really be anything new. Ultimately, the only one who can decide what the best course of action to take is you. I made this video just to share my thoughts and have zero intentions of being the type of person who decides what is or isn't ethical. From the brand of clothes you wear to the brand of foods you eat, almost every aspect of our society is rooted in some degree of unethical behavior. And I'm not justifying it. It's actually pretty terrifying when you think about it. But this is the reality. No human is 100% ethical and it's up to you to determine what's important to you. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, for those who made it to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. And yeah, this video is definitely, you know, a bit more on the negative side, but you know, something that's just always been on my mind as a manga reader. And I think that this was a, you know, discussion that was very important to have. And yeah, I just wanted to share it with you guys. Hope everyone enjoyed it and maybe even learned something from it. Uh, thank you guys.